Uh, my first question is, um, is, first of all, what is your position on the right to life of the unborn child? What has shaped that position and what specific experience do you bring to promoting that view? Well, it's a, a, a lifelong um, belief for me that, uh, that life begins at conception and continues all the way through, uh, through natural uh, death. Um, it is uh, a part of, of the fabric of who I am. It's how I was raised. Uh, it's a part of, of my faith. It's a part of what I believe is, uh, uh, is morally uh, correct. It's been shaped probably by so many different factors, and I have to say a lot of tremendous uh, uh, strong women out there. Uh, my mother in particular, and as a mother of three children, uh, with modern technology and science, uh, how anyone can deny that, that life is inside of you from the very beginning is, um, uh, is, is unbelievable to me. But um, I've uh, I had great opportunities to, to live my pro-life um, beliefs and faith throughout my entire life. Uh, I was a person that went on the January 22nd bus trips to Washington, D.C. to to March. When I was co-chairman of the Republican National Committee, I, I hosted hospitality suites so the marchers could come in uh, from the cold and get something to eat and, and talk about their journey and talk about uh, the necessity for them to go over and talk to the legislators about, uh, about good pro-life legislation. I have promoted candidates out there who are pro-life and supported them 100%. I talk about my um, about my pro-life uh, beliefs. I have a, a mother-in-law who founded Missouri Citizens for Life, now known as Missouri Right to Life. Her name is Loretta Wagner, a marvelous role model and inspiration for me. For all of us. She is. And, and uh, she began some 25 years ago a, a marvelous alternative for women uh, in pri crisis pregnancy called Our Ladies Inn. And there are now two marvelous centers here in the metropolitan area. And my family and I, including my children, who I have also um, educated and, uh, and lived that pro-life tenets and beliefs with, uh, we, we volunteer, we give of our time and our treasure, and we support um, Loretta and Our Ladies Inn uh, for the last uh, 25 years. So the, the pro-life belief for me is very personal. It's very deep. It, uh, it spans both my, both my personal beliefs along with... Um, uh, my political beliefs also. Thank you, Anne. It's clear that it does run deep. And the political beliefs are the, are the next question. It's how that all translate as an RNC chairman. And there have been different models in the past, different habits and ways of being. Often it is, uh, those habits have tended towards um, not focusing on institutionalizing uh, the pro-life platform and personal position of the chairman. In the, at the RNC and putting resources behind that conviction. Um, and so my question to you is, um, how do you see yourself um, institutionalizing uh, that, that position and promoting it with the resources uh, at the RNC? Well, I mean, you have to make sure that we have a good, strong pro-life platform, and I have served on platform committees both in Missouri as chairman for three terms uh, of the Missouri Republican Party, and then at the national level also, uh, I served on the platform committee, especially when I was uh, co-chairman of the RNC during the uh, 2004, in particular, um, platform uh, committee. So I believe we have to make sure that it is, is strong and solid in our platform. I also think it's a responsibility for us to promote pro-life candidates and lift them up and, and, uh, and give them the, uh, the, the, the backbone to talk about the issue. Oftentimes, um, candidates may shy away from speaking about social issues, and, and I don't think that's, um, uh, that, that's good or proper at all. I think they should lift up their beliefs if that is how they believe. Uh, and I think most of all, you know, we, we elect candidates so that hopefully we can affect public policy. And the most important thing that we can do is, is pass good pro-life legislation. And when I chaired the Missouri Republican Party, one of my uh, greatest moments in fulfillment was in both 2001, when we, we took the Missouri Senate for the first time in 50 years, and then in 2002, when we uh, won the GOP, won uh, the Missouri House for the first time in half a century also. We got a Republican governor then in Matt Blunt, and we were able to pass pro-life legislation that, uh, oh, on multiple fronts, from ending taxpayer-funded 
uh, abortion, uh, kicking Planned Parenthood out of the classroom. Uh, there were uh, numerous things that we were able to do um, uh, for good pro-life legislation out there that um, even regarding abstinence programs, I personally have, have taught abstinence programs to young women in, uh, in high school. Uh, there are many Catholic uh, parochial uh, all-girls schools here in, uh, in the St. Louis metro area, and that has uh, been something that I've had an opportunity to do over my, uh, my lifetime. So ultimately our goal is to you know, pass good pro-life um, legislation out there. And so I think, uh, I hope that answers uh, the question. Yes, it, does. Critical. it does. Just a, a, a quick follow-up, and that is that the habit that I refer to has a, um, a little bit more to do with um, a reticence, I, I think, to, um, to highlight and poll and really strategize on, on the life issue, especially when we know that it will uh, bring voters our way in close elections. So, you know, I'm, I'm not all the time, but often. For instance, in this last in the health care fight where really uh, keeping funding out of abortion was the one area of bipartisan consensus that stuck until the very end and finally when those guys caved at the end it was the last it was the last straw in health care passed focusing a lot of resources and energy and effort on getting into those districts where that was a big issue would have been incredibly helpful um, if and and so I'm and that involves a lot of money and involves involves strategy when appropriate given the law. Um, so I I am kind of thinking a little bit more nuts and bolts in, in addition to what you said. Sure. Well, I, I think that's important also. And I, as I said, I think we need to have our candidates uh, promote those ideals because I do believe it is in keeping with the majority of our electorate out there. I don't believe they want their tax dollars going to fund Planned Parenthood uh, uh, or abortion. They certainly, I think, uh, a large majority of our electorate abhor uh, partial birth uh, abortion, uh, for instance. I think we've been able to pass tremendous legislation in, in that regard. You know, and in terms of the nuts and bolts, what I've encouraged a lot of our candidates to do, especially here in Missouri, is we, we talk about the life issue um, in two, way, two ways often. One is by, by radio, regional radio ads, uh, which I have um, helped write and, and promote out there for our candidates, and also through direct mail pieces also. And sitting down and, and giving pro-life organizations and groups like Susan B. Anthony, um, like National Right to Life, and there are so many out there, a seat at the table to discuss messaging, to discuss these very issues that, that you're talking about, Marjorie. Um, you all know the best way, I think, probably to message this to the public out there. Uh, you certainly have all the facts and information that are necessary, both for our Republican National Committee, for our state parties out there, uh, and also for our candidates. So, so uh, what I would do as chairman of the Republican National Committee would, would be to promote that kind of dialogue and interaction with organizations like Susan B. Anthony uh, and others so that, that our, our candidates can be lifted up and, and steeled, so to speak, uh, by, the, by the facts, which are, I believe, on our side and certainly on the side of, of a majority of our electorate out there. I, I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much. And I have one very easy last question, uh, which we're asking of every candidate. Um, uh, have, you given a, have you ever given a contribution to or bundled candidate contributions through a pro-choice group such as Wishlist or Planned Parenthood? Uh, no, never, never. Stop. Just make it pure. Never have, never <laughs> would. <laughs> I love your reaction. <laughs> But uh, you you can see why you know in the I, uh, that it's a question that we think answering is very important because it's very easy for many of our political figures to say they hold something very deeply and then often undermine their very beliefs by funding organizations that undermine that belief. You're, you're quite right, Marjorie, and, and you can't just um, uh, talk the talk. You have to walk the walk, and and in in issues like this. Uh, whether it has to do with uh, with pro life or um, um, uh, or marriage, which we're I assuming about to get to, uh, you you have to you have to to, uh, to live those values and um, be raised in those values and um, and they have to also transcend and move outside of politics, which I guess is is my point. I've been able to bring those beliefs uh, to the political arena. 
Um, but, but also, regardless of that, whether it's through charitable groups, whether it's through education, whether it's through um, um, so many different avenues, you have to live that, uh, uh, that belief. And how? Thank you very much. Um, thank you again so much for doing this. Um, I, uh, so I could ask this first question a lot of ways, but, but let me ask it this way. Um, your uh, daughter comes up to you and says, Mom, I'm with you on the life issue totally, but I really don't understand what's the problem on this marriage thing. What's the best case that you can make for, for why it's not only true that marriage is a union of a husband and wife, but why that's an idea that matters that we have to? Well, I, I, in marriage and, and traditional marriage between one man and one woman is, is the, the, the fabric of our society. It's what knits us together. It is uh, both morally, biblically, however you want to approach it, is, um, is, is what marriage is in our society. And uh, I think the best way to explain that to a daughter uh, or a son, I have two sons and, and a, a daughter who's about to turn 16. <laughs> is, yes, yes. Uh, we could have a long discussion about that. <laughs> uh, the, the best way to, to do that is, is to, to live that, um, that, found, that value uh, directly and to, to lead by, I think, example. I have been um, uh, happily and faithfully married to my husband for, gosh, in February it will be 24 years. We do have three wonderful children, and they're extremely supportive of, of the kind of work that I have um, choose to pursue over the last two decades, which has been to channel so many of my beliefs, both uh, fiscally and, and socially, uh, into the Republican Party. So to answer my daughter's question, I, I think she's grown up in a, in a family where both parents have been privileged uh, to be a part of her life. It is the fabric of our, our culture, our society. I believe in it uh, morally, ethically, and and uh, I find it sad that we have to, to legislate this, but um, uh, but we do, and we should. Well, thank you. Um, my second question is, uh, it's very clear that the Republican Party voters are, are quite united on this issue, um, more than 80% think marriage is the union of one man and one woman. Uh, in this last election cycle, uh, we saw the uh, attempt to bring out pro-gay marriage, fiscally conservative candidates, and like from Dee Dee Scosafava to Bill Binney in New Hampshire to Tom Campbell in California, and they were all soundly uh, rejected by voters. Um, and uh, every time this issue has been put to the voters, as you know, but not only in our uh, more socially conservative states, but also in states like uh, Wisconsin and um, uh, Oregon and California and Maine. Most recently, of course, the, the, the people of Iowa. Yeah, that was amazing. Three Supreme Court justices, including, including the, I believe, the chief justice that, uh, that Iowa rejected. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I hear where you're coming from. Yeah, I don't, you know, the National Organization for Marriage has been deeply involved in all of these races since our founding in 2007, too. You know, I don't know, um, we're now a, about a $12 million a year organization and on path we hope to double. Uh, so we know really well that there are a lot of people who care intensely about it. And yet we do find that many candidates tell us that the political insiders, um, there have been some suggestions that even informally in the RNC, that they are actively discouraged from uh, making using marriage as an issue politically. And uh, again, we do realize in a time of economic collapse, this is not going to be the number one issue on voters' minds. We're not asking that. But we are wondering if you feel, as an RNC chairman, that uh, uh, it's a bad idea for candidates to try to draw a distinction on the marriage issue, to put it on their websites, to consider running advertisements in districts where that's appropriate and what your policy as an RNC chair would be? Well, as an RNC chairman, I would, uh, I would never shy away from uh, my, um, my very strong belief that uh, in traditional marriage between a man and a woman, and, and I think our candidates uh, should not be afraid to do that either. And uh, I think we should also, in terms of candidate recruitment, be looking for candidates that uh, support our platform, support 
uh, our beliefs in this this regard uh, because not only is it is it right and true uh, by our beliefs and by our platform but it's also a winning message and this is what we have got to communicate I think to our candidates out there I've, I've seen it here in Missouri again once we got that majority we in 2004 uh, did pass a, a constitutional uh, amendment banning gay marriage here in Missouri, and it passed with 71% of the electorate. Um, it was a great day, and, and I, I believe that that is the case, as you said, uh, whether you're a blue state or a red state or anywhere in between, I think that's where the American people are. They believe in traditional marriage. They want to lift that up. Uh, it, it's, it's now more important um, than ever, I think, uh, given our, our society and how quickly things are moving and whether it's all the social networking out there, all the, the, the amazing new technology, which is uh, both a blessing and sometimes a, a curse. On a day like today, it's a great blessing. But, uh, but, but yes, it's important that we hold uh, true to those, those uh, traditional um, tenets and values that are, I think, a pillar of our Republican Party and uh, our platform. Um, and certainly one that I've incorporated in, in my life. To me, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, a devoted and devout Catholic. I believe that the marriage between a man and a woman is, um, is not just the fabric of our society, but to me it is a sacrament and a pledge that I make between, um, in front of God and, uh, and church and family and friends, and one that I make for life. So uh, uh, there are so many things that uh, are a part of this belief, and to the extent that we can have our candidates stand up for life, for marriage, uh, and to talk about it, I think they serve as tremendous examples and role models uh, to all of society. Uh, so I, I would certainly be very promotive of that uh, as chairman of the Republican National Committee. Thank you so much.